fans, this is That's Girl Clown. Here, two of you, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, aka the boy who drowned in chocolate sauce. What? Where did that title came from? From Denmark? You know, someone tied up with that team. This here too, the boy who drowned in. Wow. Red with chocolate sauce. Jesus Christ. Whoever did this knows how Willy Wonka is. Huh. Without further ado, let's get started with this review. Hello, YouTube fans. This is the Skull Clown. So, we start with this character named Charlie Bucket, and he's one of the best characters in this whole movie, right next to uh, the other kids. All the other, all these actors do great, phenomenal, great job. I love the songs in this movie. Um, great memorable songs like Good Luck Charlie, and I Got a Golden Ticket. I, lo I love that song, that Golden Ticket. The Cheer, the cheer Up Charlie one is, is a good song. It's actually, it, it, the reason I like it so much is because, like, you feel Charlie you really do. You feel like he can't get what he wants. But I'm getting too ahead of myself here that Charlie wants to get the golden ticket and wants to go to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. And, um, yeah, Willy Wonka is sending out these tickets and prize, um, this ticket. And whoever has a ticket can go to the Chocolate Factory and one lucky Trojan can have his chocolate and also the factory. Which is like, holy crap! That is awesome! So, obviously, there's a few kids that get it, a few nasty little children get it, and one little good kid gets it, Charlie Bucket, and he's poor, obviously, he lives with his mom, in the book, um, the dad is in the book, but they kill him off, which is like, damn, movie, um, they want to focus on, they thought it would be more, um, better if the mom was, um, a widow, and she was working hard as hell, instead of just being like, oh, you know, she's just doing this while her husband is working hard over there. It makes the whole mother dynamic, being single and all that, is really respected. And this movie was a, was ahead of its time. I'm dead serious. If every mom in Holyoke that is single have, has watched this movie, has probably loved it. Or at least know how they feel about raising kids alone and all that crap. Especially with a whole bunch of family members too. Because Charlie's mom needs to raise Charlie herself her aunt and uncles. And her father. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I would have been like, fuck you guys. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Um, well, actually, maybe. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, eventually, Charlie goes to the store, and the Candyman, I'm sorry, I hate the guy. I hate the Candyman guy. At first, in the beginning of the movie, he, he sings the Candyman song, which is a good song, but holy crap, he is a, he's an asshole. Why? Because these rich kids come, and what he does he do? Grab all the candy and throws everyone on the kids, like, here, you have candy, you have candy, you have candy. And what happens with Charlie? Pay up, motherfucker. Are you fucking kidding me? Fuck you. You're throwing out candy, like, everywhere. Like, there's no one's business. But yet, when, once a starving child wants chocolate, you're like, where's the fucking money? Fuck you! Fuck you, Candyman! Fuck you! Supposedly, really Wonka is the Candyman, but... Alright, the guy that works in the candy store is a dick. Willy Wonka is the official Candyman. He is. He, he, he really is Candyman. But the guy that's in the candy store is a dick. And if you don't believe me, just watch the part when he opens the door and almost hits the girl's head like that. I love that they didn't even edit that. I love... That the fact that they didn't even reshoot that clip. The fact that they kept that in speaks volumes of how they wanted the movie to be. They wanted the movie to be mysterious. They wanted the movie to be a little bit like, what the fuck is going to happen next? Oh, it's weird. And it's funny too, this movie kind of parodies itself. There's this one moment that this guy wants to find out how the, um, um, how the chocolate work and who's going to um, have the chocolate next. Who's going to get the golden ticket next. Which is random. It's true. It's random. And why will you do that? There's, in real life, that is random. Why will you make a machine that is that automatically says that... Or, I mean, that's a competition that's random automatically. You can't just be like, hey, machine, who's going to win this competition? And it automatically will tell you. That's impossible. Now, if it's a 
DC throne that tells you everything that's going on. But moving on with that, it, it literally, it's hilarious. The parody stuff is just hilarious. It does feel like a different film when it shows the parody stuff. It's so funny because the guy's like, it's like, oh my god, I just want the chocolate really bad and all that. And then, the, and then he's talking to his therapist like, so where is it? And he's like, what does it matter? I just want some chocolate, the Wonka chocolate. He's like, tell me what the chocolate is. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the fuck? And then there's another one that that does it, that does also a parody. I'm serious. When they show these parodies, it's hilarious. But um, once the guy gets the information of who has the golden ticket, it literally says none of your business. And it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's fucking hilarious. I'm like, what the fuck? And then um, what was it? There was another part when um. I feel like it was like a novella thing, but it felt such a parody, but it's supposed, I think it was supposed to tell how the water reacts to these Wonka bars, and it's fucking hilarious, it feels like a parody, it's so funny, it's the highlight, the best highlight of the whole film is that, I mean, there's more highlights, obviously, but that is a huge highlight that made me laugh so freaking hard, this is the part when um the, wo um, the woman's talking to this guy, and the guy is like, I, I think he was a tech detective. He's like, listen, woman, if we don't get this chocolate, this guy's gonna die. And she's like, how much chocolates do I need to, you know, make him live or something like that? How long do I need to have to get ready for it? And I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I love this movie. Never change. Never freaking change. I love this movie. And eventually, all these little kids get the ticket, and you see Wonka. Awesome. But he's limping. What? That everyone just looks so sad and depressed that Wonka is just like, oh, he's just a limpy old man. And then it's like, wait, what? He's. He's. Faking! <laughs> Best part of the movie, obviously. It's really crazy how that happened. And it's funny, too, because Wonka. Literally, um, Gene Wilder, um, rest in peace. Um, I feel like we lost him too soon, in my opinion. Um, Gene Wilder, he literally said. Um, if I don't do that limping, I'm not going to do this movie. Because at that point, you won't know if Wonka is telling the truth or not. And that is true. When I first watched this movie, I'm all like, is he lying to me or is he just fucking with me? <laughs> I'm dead serious. When I first watched this movie as a kid, I'm like, is he messing with me or fuck with me? Either way, I like it. <laughs> I keep doing that. Um, and eventually, he, vents, um, he brings the kids into the chocolate factory and um, he gets the tickets, and then they make um, the kid sign something, and all the parents are like, "Whoa, hey, we don't, we, we didn't, we don't, we didn't hear any contracts here. I want to read this from head to toe." And then, um, what was it? Faruka is like, "Oh, dad," <laughs> signed her like death away. And then um, Grandpa Joe doesn't say anything. He's like, "Well, go ahead, Charlie." I would have been like, Grandpa Joe. I would have got that too. I would have been a concerning grandfather, a concerning parent, a concerning guardian. Even, I know that that contract is long as hell, but I would have took my sweet ass time to read all of it. And I mean all of it. I mean, even Wonka even reads it at the end of the movie. So why not read the whole thing before Wonka explodes at fucking Charlie? <laughs> but he did it on purpose. Most people are like, how, how do you know he did it on purpose? It's just the way I feel that he did it on purpose. But eventually he, op eventually, he brings the kids and the adults to the room. He brings one, he literally brings the adults to, and the kids to a room that keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's like, oh, it's claustrophobic. Then Wonka, Wonka goes back and it's like, all right, it's over here. And it's like, we just came from there. And he's like, really? <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the chocolate room. Everyone's face is generous. Like, literally, that's the real reaction to this chocolate room. It is amazing. And this chocolate room looks nice, except for that river. It, it I, I never actually thought that river looked like chocolate, even though it, it is chocolate. That chocolate room is freaking awesome. It looks delicious. Mostly, everything in that room is edible. That's like a dream come true. <laughs> that is like a dream, dream come true. I remember when I was a little, little kid, when I watched this, I was like, Imagine all of those are edible, then when I found out over the years that some of them are edible, it's like, I wish I was on the set! I would have... <laughs> Got the gummy... Yeah. That's the only part that was um, gummy, the, um, the gummy bear. Yeah. So yeah, those are the people that wanted a big giant gummy bear, 
Sorry, only the eels are gummy. It's kind of sad. But at least we get this awesome song by Gene Wilder. Just everything about that chocolate room is awesome. Count to three. Come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look, and you see into your imagination. Fun is just beautiful. It literally is. It literally is everything about this movie. It's pure imagination. One of the reasons why I'm so happy Ready Player One is even using this song. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, if you're paying homage to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, might as well use pure imagination in your song. And Thor Ragnarok did the same thing too. But this song reminds me so much of basically um, Wizard of Oz. You know, just that song of Wizard of Oz of always coming home. It brings you tear to your eyes. But this song just... Just brings more imagination to you than any other song in the world, in my opinion. Right, Augustus, don't touch the chocolate with human hands, especially if it looks like that. I mean, okay, it looked like Wonka just didn't want to help him at all, though. It, it kind of looked funny. My beautiful chocolate. <laughs> the sarcasm is beautiful. <laughs> Augustus, go. Augustus, go. The Nick and Poop? Yeah, that's the only catchy song in the remake of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory that's actually catchy. Only Augustus' song is catchy through the whole movie of that remake. But this one, Oompa Loompa's just seen. It, it, it's kind of it's kind of funny. Do they get prepared or do they know that these kids die so they get ready to be like, all right, man, the, the fat one died. Now it's time to, uh... Obviously, talk about how he's gonna die. But, but, but uh, how did he die? Well, he, he drowned in chocolate. Oh, perfect. Now we can, we can talk about how he drowned in chocolate, um, how his mother is not, how his mother is not responsible for him, and how his mother is always making him obese and all that. It's like, Jesus Christ, did, 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 any, did any of these people get the book of Dante's Inferno? Because if they did, then it's like they took Dante's Inferno and made it into Willy Wonka. In the chocolate factory. You know what? Yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. But, Augustus dies. Yeah, he does. He does die. He drowns in chocolate sauce. <laughs> okay, I mean, it says the title. The boy who drowned in chocolate sauce. Drowned. Like, <laughs> After that, we get this boat ride from hell. Most people will be like, well, it was planned for these kids to die because Augustus and his mother don't even have seats in the boat. And you know what? Yeah, it's true. There is no seats for Augustus and her mother. So what if Wonka did went to the boat before Augustus went to the Chocolate River, you know? Um, then automatically, Willy Wonka would have been like, sorry, there's no room for you, so you gotta leave. No room for fatties here. You know what? In a in a parody, I can see Willy Wonka being a dick like that. And it's funny too, because this movie is almost kind of like a parody anyways. But it is funny that if if you made a parody of this, Willy Wonka could just be like, Oh, you fuck pat, all oh, you fuck, you poor fat bastards can't fit in this boat. You guys gotta leave. And it's like, that's fucked up. That is fucked, fucked, fucked up. But uh, obviously that didn't happen. We got a different version of it. Um, just my little imagination. <laughs> let's, let's all agree to not be creative again. Let's just remember that. But, when they go into the haunted boat ride, it is the most scariest shit ever! Um... What the fuck? And they're certainly not 
boat ride. That's a boat ride from hell. Like, that is the boat from Dante's Inferno type of hell. I am dead serious. Like, what the fuck? How did you install that? How'd you even have time to install that? And do you just freak out everybody when they come to your fucking factory? Oh, welcome to my factory. Boo! Oh, how about this? Hey, welcome to my factory. Sit down and have dinner with your kids. Don't worry, they'll be on the menu. What? Nothing. <laughs> that is, that scene is crazy. I could talk about that all day. Like, I'm dead serious. I can talk about that all day. Mainly because it comes out of nowhere. What the fuck? Who thought of that? Whoever did. Congrats, because that shit's scary. It scared the fuck out of me as a kid. Still does. I, I, every time I see it, I'm like, Oh my god. That is terrifying, and I'm scarred for life. Thank you, Gene Wilder. Thank you. We all love you at the end of the day, though. And we get victim two. Wow, it's about, damn. These kids are dying off like Saul, literally. It's like, once the kids come into the factory, it is every kid from themselves. Now you all will die from the hands of Jigsaw Wonka. <laughs> Even Veruca's looking at her like, what the fuck just happened to her? Well, I mean, she ate it. It's her fault. <laughs> All the time. Wait, wait. Who? How? They all become blueberries? You mean you did this more than once, Wonka? What the fuck? There's no air in there. Hmm? That's juice. Juice? Would you roll the young lady down to the juicing room at once, please? What for? To squeeze it. Just to be squeezed immediately before she explodes. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. Wonka needs to take Violet and squeeze her. Squeeze her. Well, she will pop. 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 You know that new trailer of Record Ralph where they're feeding the rabbit and what is it, the penguin or something like that? Or, I don't know. They're feeding. Two video game characters, um, wreck -It Ralph. And he feeds pancakes to the rabbit non-stop, non-stop, and the, and the rabbit becomes so big, and he eats one more, and it's like, and the little girl looks at it, she's like, ah! It's so fucking funny. If you haven't seen that trailer, go ahead and watch it. It's fucking hilarious. That part reminds me of this. That's what Violet, that's what happened to Violet. She popped completely. Even if you squeeze her, What's the point? You're gonna squish her bones and everything that's the, well, she's already imploded anyway, so obviously her bones are gonna break and fragile and everything like that. Holy crap. This is not the first time it's happened, Wonka. And you didn't learn from your mistake. How many times has this happened? No, seriously, how long? How many times has this has happened? How long has this been going on, Wonka? I mean, you don't even have people walking in your factory anymore. You only have the Zoopa Loompas. So, what you got open lupus from? From what? From Africa? Ouch. That is racist as fuck. If you look at the book version, the bin, they changed how open lupus look. The Willy Wonka version, or the other version where it has golden hair, which I actually like, to be quite honest with you, but that's just me. Yes, the original Oompa Loompas were black. That says a lot about the person that made the book. I am dead serious. Most people be like, that's kind of fucked up. But when you really think about it, how you live and how you interpretate life, you put on books and, and movies. It's true, isn't it? So we get Victim 3, and it's Veruca. Well, too bad. You are gonna get it now. From hell. Uh, Veruca. 
As a kid, I loved her. I am dead serious. I had a big crush on her as a kid. And too late to be with her because she's dead. She was a bad egg. Right. I agree, Wonka. Where'd she go? Where all the other bad eggs go? Down the garbage chute. <laughs> garbage chute. <shoot. laughs> right. Where does it lead to? To the furnace. <laughs> the furnace. <laughs> Right. Oh, inside the two. <laughs> Walker, you fucking ape shit crazy. Are you serious? Well, another bad egg. I agree. Get victim four, Mike Television. You want to know how he gets fucked over? You want to know how he dies? Do you really want to know? Do you want to know where Laffy Taffy's come from? Okay. Here it is. You'll find the boy in his mother's purse. But be extremely careful. What are they saying? Yeah, Laffy Taffy. Wait, are you serious? He's small, and you're going to stretch him into a Laffy Taffy. What is wrong with you? Psychopath. So, everybody's dead except for Charlie and Grandpa Joe and <laughs> Wonka takes Charlie and Grandpa Joe to the exit, shakes both of their hands, he's like, see ya, I'm busy, I have a lot to walk to do, and he leaves. And Charlie's like, that, what happened? It, it, did we do something wrong? And Grandpa Joe's like, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. And walks in Wonka's room. And everything in Wonka's room is cut in half. So, it could tell that Wonka has, a pos has two different personalities. One, that he's good and, and kind and all that. The other is dark, twisted, and, and wants to kill people. Um, but they both mix into one, so that's why it's a split personality. Kind of like Two-Face, you get one good side, but the other bad side both simultaneously at the same time. I mean, for kind of loud! He has a statue of a head that's in half, but he puts his hat on it. <laughs> I'm dead serious. That's so funny. Imagine having a half pen. <laughs> he doesn't have that, but that would be fucking hilarious. But he goes out. He, he basically tells Charlie he loses. He, yeah, he tells him he loses. What a dick. You lose. Bitch! Good day, sir. Right. No, no, he's not a crook. Well, actually, yes, he is. He's a very psychopath crook. And I agree. <laughs> and you a monster! I said good day! <laughs> you could just tell I love this movie. I do. Hands down, one of my favorite movies of all time. My top. 10 favorite movies of all time. It is up, it is up there. I love this movie to death. And the sarcasm, the lines, it's just, nowadays, it probably would have gone past people's heads, but now, it's, since this is the 21st century, people laugh at this shit. Why? Because it's such sharp, because times have changed, and the way Wonka is, is right now is kind of perverted, and child molesting and also sarcastic so in real life if Wonka was alive he'd probably be questioned a lot but with his sarcastic meaner people would just be like oh he's he's just playing around goofing around and all that let him free and all that that probably would have happened um but with the 21st century everyone would be like no he belongs in prison and jail he killed people <laughs> he killed children and made them chocolate in a way yeah to be, a lot of people say that too. A lot of people be like, this, um, Willy Wonka's Wonka is not like a child molester Wonka like the Johnny Depp one. This one is more like, come kids. It's almost like um the handsome, it's like Hansel and Gutter. Basically, Willy Wonka is the evil witch from Hansel and Gutter. Come children, come have some candy and then eat some and then recruit a new witch. Yeah, w Rob Walker said it best. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is basically um, the evil witch 
killing all the kids and recruiting a new witch. Basically, yeah. If you take Dante's Inferno and Hansel and Greta and put it together, and you put Roald Dolph's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory in it, you get this movie. It really is. It is that type of movie. You feel how much you, you feel the love, you feel the warmth, but you also feel how dark and disturbing it is. You feel how, how this movie could have been way different, but also the way that we got is kind of unique. Because this movie could have been anything, if you really think about it. Because you've seen, because if you see the scenes and everything like that, you'd be like, this movie could have gone either way. It could have had, but it didn't. It went through the route that some people were like, what the fuck? Fuck this movie! But I like this movie. I love this movie to death. I don't like the Tim Burton version. I never did. Um, even though that is closer to the book, I do agree with that. If people said, oh, but that's closer to the book. I won't disagree with you. It is closer to the book. But that does not mean it's good. <laughs> you know? Just because it's interpretation the book battle doesn't mean it's a good version. You know? The Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory version, it's still a good version. And, um, will we ever get another Willy Wonka movie? Yeah. Because we're going to get a prequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I'm dead serious we're getting that movie. I'm not lying. We get a fucking prequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory to figure out who Willy Wonka is. Are you fucking kidding me? The best part about Willy Wonka is that we didn't know who he was. We didn't know if he was telling truth or lying. <laughs> Stupid. I don't know why fucking Hollywood is doing that crap. Gene Wilder was rolling, rolling in his grave just thinking about that. But moving on, Charlie, he he gives um, Willy Wonka um, the candy that he gave him, the Godstopper, which is... The Godstopper is actually a drawbreaker, so the way the Gobstopper looks like, it looks pretty cool, but it's not a real candy, it, it's, it's actually, what is it, um, I think it's, I think it's glass, I think it's glass, I could be wrong, but it's made out of some type of material that is, it, it, it's hard, it's not eatable, it's not edible, sadly, but I always loved the way the Gobstoppers look like, and then when I went to the store at FYE and I saw what they really look like, they were just jawbreakers, then it's just like, Great. Thanks, Wonka. But, he gives um, the Godstopper to Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka is like, you won! I knew you won! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! And it's like, oh, okay, so you really, you just busted out out of nowhere for nothing. So, um, Charlie's like, the chocolate and everything, and Willy Wonka's like, of course the chocolate, but more than that! And that's the part where he tells him, um, he gets to inherit his company. But before that, you go to this um, glass elevator, which is funny, because that's the sequel to the Willy Wonka um, book. The Glass Elevator, which I would love to see on the big screen, love to have a sequel to that movie, but we never got it. Will we ever get it? Maybe. We should. Instead of just a remake of Willy Wonka, or just a prequel to Willy Wonka, make a sequel to Willy Wonka. We have a book, and Rodolph is dead, so him complaining about it, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Um, that's just me. I would love to see that second book to be um, adaptation into a movie somehow, because... Charlie's family, they die in that book. Yes, they die because they become the dicks. Instead of the kids, it's the adults now, which is kind of intriguing. I haven't liked the book, but the synopsis of what I've heard and everything is like that. Pretty nice. So, obviously, Wonka and Charlie go to this glass um, elevator, and so does Grandpa Joe, and it's one of the best things in the whole movie. And they died. Not playing. <laughs> Look at that scenery. That looks so beautiful. I think that's in London. I could be gone, but if anyone wants to, you know, put it down, just say it. Look at that elevator. That and that was Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Or should I say the boy who drowned in chocolate sauce? Damn, that's a crazy title. That explains the whole movie just by the title alone. But... How do I feel about this movie? Well, by this review, you already know. I love this movie to death. I grew up as a kid hating this movie, to be honest. When I first watched it, I hated this movie. The only thing that was the best part of the whole film was Gene Wilder. I fell in love with him. His sarcastic meaner, the way he delivers his lines, the way he delivers... Everything on screen was just 
pitch perfect. As an adult, I love it even more. I love the cast. I love the actors. I love the soundtrack. This movie gets an A+, plus in my opinion. Yes, there's flaws and all that. But you know what? Fuck it. I'm giving this movie an A+, plus, which is... AMAZING! Yes, I give this movie an amazing rating. What do you guys think? Do you guys think this movie is amazing? Do you think it's kind of crap? Do you think it's mediocre? Do you think it's ah, uh, alright? Me? I could put this on any time of the week and enjoy the fuck out of it. I love this movie. And if you watch this movie as a horror film, yeah! It is like a horror film! And if you take the ending, it's kind of scary. Yeah, at the end, if you really think about it, it's actually kind of scary. It's the whole part of me talking about Willy Wonka being a, a witch and killing a whole bunch of kids and recruiting a new witch. It's kind of like that. If you really, that's this is the that's why I love this movie so much. You could take it in, in a different interpretation. You could take it into whimsical imagination, or you could take it into horror, and in a way. That's, that's not too bad. I'm surprised this movie's not in the horror section. I mean, how many kids died? How many kids died? Four. Well, if you count the parents, who knows how they died. They're probably still being tortured and beaten and death even after the credits roll. Oh. That's an image that no one doesn't want to think about. Well, this is the Skull Clown signing off. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And tell me what you think about this review. And tell me what you think about this amazing, awesome, awesome movie. I want some chocolate. I, I, I don't know why I didn't get chocolate for this review. Every person that's reviewed this movie has at least got a chocolate bar on them. I need to buy that. Okay, signing off. Have a nice day.